Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor. Today I want to show you our new three pack of shopper totes. These are high capacity tote bags that can be used for grocery shopping, beach bag, as a diaper bag, or just general shopping. And when you get them, all three of these designs come in one kit. So you get to make each different design, which is why we use different fabrics on them. Inside your kit, you're going to get a printed utility fabric. This is like a polypropylene with a pattern printed right on it. And then you will also get these plastic bases. And these are gonna fit in the bottom of the tote bag so that you can really get it, keep it nice and secure. Now, we're going to go through this design that has the pocket on today because this is the one that's probably the most difficult. Once you sew one, the others are gonna be really easy. So I'm gonna go through all the steps for that as well. Now, if you like these shopper totes and you want to do a utility tote that works for cold food or hot food, we also have this one. And this tote has an insulated batting in it. So when you get this tote, the batting has a little shine to it and that means it's good to keep foods cold or hot. This one also comes with these braided straps so that it's nice and secure. And we also send these bands along with it as well so that if you want to put a button on your tote and close it so you can keep your food warm or cold, it's a real easy way to do that. And then of course it will come with a plastic base as well. So let's get going to the tutorial. Our first step is we're going to trim around the edge of our tote design and leave about an extra half inch here to work with, inch or half inch to work with. And then we're gonna to go to our instruction sheet, turn it over to the back side, and we're gonna cut all of our pieces of fabric out. So we have several two and a half inch strips to cut, some five inch squares. We also have our backing, also called our lining fabric. And then we have this piece 10B. And what piece 10B is, it's gonna form our pocket. So we have you start out by cutting a 12 inch by six inch strip, fold it in half and press it. So where you folded it, this becomes the top of our pocket and it's eventually gonna be attached to another six inch piece and going to be sewn into the tote. And this is gonna form our pocket. So these two together are going to form one piece. So once we've got everything cut out and our lining cut out, we're going to begin to assemble. Our backing fabric is now cut, so we need to attach it to our printed base material. You can use quilt basting spray, or you can simply pin to attach this on, like I'm doing. And once you've got it all pinned or sprayed, what we're going to do is we're going to sew on the solid line all the way around the edge of the tote. Now we've actually got that done so we can show you. And we used a high contrast color thread so that it's gonna be easy to see. Because when we get done sewing this, we're gonna actually use this as our trim line. So if you wanna use a high contrast thread, that'll help you out. So again, sew all the way around the edge of the tote on the solid line, and that will secure our printed substrate to our backing. Now we're gonna take piece one and put it in the number one rectangle like this right side up. Piece two is going to go against piece one, right sides together and raw edges even. So note that these are not sewing lines, but they're placement lines. It's where we place our fabrics. The next thing we can do is pin this in position and we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance through all layers. So we'll be sewing right quarter of an inch in from the edge through both layers of fabric, through our printed base material, and through our lining. So as you can see, we've sewn in a quarter inch seam allowance, and when I open this seam up, it's going to land right on the next placement line. What you wanna do at this point is finger press or use your roller. Do not use an iron, because we don't wanna to touch an iron to this surface, so we think finger pressing is the best way. Now we're gonna to go to piece three, which is next, and we take right sides together against piece one, raw edges even, and we're gonna sew in a quarter of an inch, and when I flip that open, it'll land on this placement line, piece four and five, and we're going to continue on. 
So we've continued to sew and we are now at 10 A and B. And that is where you're going to take that six by 12 that's folded in half. And this is your folded edge. And you're going to put it on the other piece 10 and line up the edges. And then you're going to fold it over like this and sew with both pieces in a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, I wanna flip this up so that you can see exactly what we've done here. So here's our finished edge on top, and here is exactly where piece 10 needs to land. Now the other th side of our pocket will be complete when we put on the side area here, but that is how we formed that pocket in here. Now we're on to piece 11. I've got that already right sides together and raw edges even, and we're going to flip that down and finger press that. And we're going to continue on until we have the whole middle section pieced. Our center row has been pieced and you can see that the pocket is right here. And then we added on the side pieces, continuing in numerical order. And then we added on our secondary two and a half inch strips. And now I am on piece 27. So again, you're going to take right sides together and sew in a quarter inch, and the same with 28 and 29 until your entire substrate is covered with fabric. Turn the lining side out, and now we're going to trim very close to that initial stitching line that we made when we secured our lining to our base. So cut close to that, and we've got that done here, and now you can see your tote bag um, exactly what it looks like pieced on the front and cut and trimmed on the back or the lining side. Next, take your two four and a half by 30 inch pieces that you're going to use for the strips, right sides together and perpendicular with each other. We're going to create an angle line from corner to corner so that we can join these strips and have a nice edge to them. So what I like to do is just lift this bottom fabric up and find where the corner is and make a dot right there. And then we will know that we can do our marking from that dot all the way up to the corner like this. And we are going to sew right on the line. Our sewing is done. So you can see when I bring this open how nice that's gonna be with that nice mitered um, edge in there. Now we're gonna trim this to a quarter of an inch and press. So I'm going to trim right along here. And we're going to turn this over and press. Now we're ready to continue on with our straps. Our seam is pressed and we now cut this strip to 50 inches in length. And we've got that done. And after it's cut to 50 inches in length, you're just going to press up a half inch on the short ends. So wrong sides together, about a half inch on the short ends, like that. And then what you're going to do is create a center pressed reference line. So fold your strip in half, wrong sides together like this. And what we're trying to do is to just to create a center line. So you can see right here where I'm pressing, this is going to be our center reference line. So we're going to press the strip all the way down to get that line into position. Okay, now our center reference line, you can see, is nicely pressed in here. Our next step is to take both the side edges, wrong side together, bring it up to that center pressed reference line, and press those into place. So I would go all along one edge like this, all the way down, and then I would do the top edge toward the center pressed reference line. So what you're gonna end up with is something that looks like this, all pressed into place. Now we're gonna open this back up, and we're going to center or nest our utility fabric right in the middle starting right at the base of where you pressed under that half inch. And then put the sides around it so it's nested in the center. And go ahead and nest it all the way down. 
then fold it over like this so you've created a nice firm strap and then you're going to stitch on both long edges all the way down and all the way down. Now we've got that done here so you can see what the finished result looks like. So it's folded, pressed, and we've stitched on both sides. Next we're going to position our strap on the tote. What we want to do is measure 15 inches down from the top of the totes and that is where our strap is going to go and it's actually going to point toward the base of the tote. We want to go seven and a quarter inches in and seven and a quarter inches in is right about here. So for this design we decided why not center it right in this strip. So we're going to make that decision and center in that strip and then I'll put a pin in here and then we'll do the same on the other side. So again our strap we're going to make sure that it's all facing in the correct direction like that and then we're going to go down our 15 inches put it in place and we decided to center it here so we're going to pin this and then we will sew that now i want to make this short work so we actually have that done on the other side for you so you can see how our handle was sewn like this and then we're going to pull it up and what we're going to do is then tack this down sew this down into position on both sides and we're going to stop three inches from the top and we want to do that so that there's plenty of room for us to add binding so you're going to sew on both sides stop three inches from the top and then you're going to make an x of stitching down here and that's just going to help those straps stay more secure so you'll do that on both sides and on the side we just pinned. Our straps are now sewn on each side with an X here at the base for extra security and as we follow the strap up you'll also note we stopped about three inches from the top and did a back tack and a back tack. Next we're going to fold right sides together and sew our side seams. So just like this and you're going to pin these and sew in a one half inch seam allowance all the way down this side and then the same one half inch seam allowance on this side. Our side seams are sewn and now what we have to do is to take care of this bottom so you notice that this is open like this. What we're going to do is take the tote and we're going to actually fold it the opposite direction so now that side seam is going to hit right where the center of the bottom is and we're going to actually sew that closed in a half inch seam allowance and I would suggest that you take this seam allowance from the side and fold it one way or the other sew in a half inch turn it the other direction and let's get this one done so pull this open the opposite way and again sew in a half inch seam allowance putting the side seam allowance one way or the other our gussets are sewn, so let's see what it looks like. We'll turn right sides out and see our bag coming to light. I think this lining is so pretty. It's almost as good looking as the outside of the bag. So we'll push out the corners like that. And our bag is now ready for binding. Now we're going to join our binding strips. So right sides together and perpendicular we're going to go and set one on top of the other like this and then we're just going to draw a line from corner to corner so just like we did earlier we're just going to lift this up and find out where that corner is there and then take our ruler and just simply draw our sewing line from this corner all the way to the dot sew on that line and that will finish our binding. Our binding strips are joined. So now what we're going to do is just cut off about, let's leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. And then we're gonna flip over to the pressing side and we are gonna press that seam allowance open and then begin folding our binding. So to do that, on one of the ends, you are going to want to press up about an inch, like that. 
And then you're going to press your binding strip in half, wrong sides together, like this. So you want to just start on one end and press together all the way to the other end. Starting with the pressed short end of our binding, we're going to begin pinning the binding to the wrong side or the lining side of the bag. Raw edges together. And I would actually go in a couple of inches and begin pinning at that point. And it's okay to leave this open because we're going to want to deal with that before we get, begin sewing our binding on or as we sew our binding on. So all you're going to do is pin this all the way around the edge of the bag. And then we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way along here. Start at this pin, back tack right here, and sew all the way around until you get to within about four inches of the other side. So we have our tail here that we started and this is where our binding ended up. So let's take this binding and pull it along the top and overlap about an inch. So let's trim it about right here. And then what we're going to do is open up this little tail here that's finished nest our binding in here like this and continue to pin our binding fully in place. And then we can finish sewing in our quarter inch seam allowance and have our binding all sewn on. Our binding is now sewn on. So let's turn the bag right side out and then we're gonna bring the binding around to the front and we're going to tack it down. So we'll find our starting point. You can do that right here at the side seam if you like. So you bring it up, around, pin it, and sew the binding in place very close to this bottom folded edge. Our binding is stitched down all the way around the top edge. And we also then finished the handles by sewing on both sides all the way up to the binding and across the top and making an X for reinforcement. That was done on um, both sides. And our tote is finished. We're ready to go. Look at that. Our big capacity tote is done in no time. We hope you've enjoyed making this project and many more Quilt As You Go designs as well. Mm -hmm.